We're going to start our study of matter on the sixth grade level by talking about atoms and molecules. Basically, these are the building blocks that make up everything around us. We know that all matter is made up of these tiny particles called atoms. And basically, we define an atom as just being that smallest, tiniest particle of an element that still has all the properties of the actual element. So for instance, if we had one hydrogen atom, it's the tiniest piece of hydrogen that we can possibly have while it's still hydrogen. If we were to take that single atom apart, we would have protons, neutrons, and electrons, but we wouldn't have hydrogen anymore. Each type of element has different types of atoms. For instance, a hydrogen atom would be composed differently than an aluminum atom or an iron atom. And the periodic table of elements orders all the elements from hydrogen number one all the way through 118 all of the known elements that we have currently. And it organizes them based on their properties that they have. For instance, they're organized by noble gases, which are types of gas that don't react with other elements, um, transition metals, alkali metals, and several different groups that they have on the periodic table. But these different classifications will tell us about the general properties of that type of element. Whatever type of atom we have, though, all atoms are made up of the same basic subatomic particles. In the center of the atom is a group of subatomic particles called the nucleus. And it's made of protons, which are tiny positively charged particles, and neutrons, which are negatively charged, or rather neutrally charged particles. These are particles that have no charge. So in the center of the atom, you have neutrally charged and positively charged particles, and then orbiting or circling around these are electrons. And these are the negatively charged particles. We talk about electricity being the flow of negatively charged particles. It's actually the flow of these electrons that generates electrical current. But in a normally behaving atom, these electrons would simply be orbiting the nucleus much like Earth orbits the sun, except a little bit more, I would say, chaotically, because rather than just following one single simple orbit, they're all over the place but they do retain that attraction to the nucleus based on the opposite charges between the protons and the electrons. Sometimes these single individual atoms will bond together with other atoms either of the same type or different types to form what we call a molecule. And a molecule is a new substance that can have very different properties than the actual atoms that make it up. In some cases, you may have the same types, like oxygen gas, which is made up of just an oxygen atom bonded to another oxygen atom. But in some cases, you have different types, something like table salt. We call it you know, sodium chloride, which is a chemical name, but we just refer to it as salt. It's what we eat on our food. It's you know, fairly safe for our bodies, and our bodies need a certain amount of it. But it's actually made of sodium, which is an alkali metal that's highly unstable and reactive, combined with a chlorine atom, which by itself is a poisonous gas. But together these make a stable solid substance, sodium chloride or salt. We use molecular formulas to describe the atoms that make up a substance. And a molecular formula, basically it's just a chemical formula and it shows us the type of atoms that are in something and the number of those atoms. One that most people are familiar with is the molecular formula for water, which is H2O. And that just means that you have two atoms of hydrogen bonded with one atom of oxygen. So it's a molecule of water, but it's made up of three individual atoms. If you pulled those atoms apart, you would have the elemental substances, but you wouldn't have the molecule, molecule of water anymore. Other examples of some common molecules that we might encounter, um, sucrose, which is our regular table sugar that we use. It's made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Gasolines made of carbon atoms bonded to hydrogen atoms, and baking soda contains sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. And again, we have the numbers there in the subscript with the chemical symbols showing us how many of each of those types of atoms there are in those individual molecules. It's during chemical changes that these molecules can be either formed or broken apart. Chemical changes, as we've already learned, basically are processes that, through chemical reactions, will create new substances. And when new substances are created, molecular bonds are even either broken 
and bonded differently or individual atoms are bonded together to make new molecules. So through these chemical changes, bonds can change and form new substances during chemical reactions.